In the next 30 minutes, I'm going to talk about pre-winning mortality now. So, but before to start my presentation, I would like to tell you two different things. The first one is that I'm not going to talk about something new. What I'm going to tell you is which of the basic practices should be considered and should be executed to be success. And the second thing is, I understand that some management, some practicalities could be implemented in a different way. That presentation is made, was made based on our experience, visiting different customers, different systems, with different realities and with different challenges. So the pre-winning mortality is an old and well-known enemy. In 1976, 38 years ago, some research saw that 75% of the piglet are dead during the first four days of life. And what about today? I think that today the industry is facing the same problem. We know that 70% of pre-winning mortality is attributed to only a few causes, and all of these causes, all of these reasons are preventable, like uh, late downs, low viability, runs, starvation. We know also that pre-winning mortality is a complex, complex issue. If we are focusing our job, if we are focusing our efforts only in individual tactics, we are not going to be success. It's for that reason that we believe that we need to focus our job, we need to focus our efforts in four different areas. The right cell, health and sanitation, ELP care, and fallback management. The first area, the right cell. The pre-winning mortality control start in gestation. Why? Because we need to minimize the number of sows or the number of fat sows and the number of thin sows that we have in our sow population. So the feed management in gestation is playing a big role. What we have to do, we need to have a practical body condition evaluation and implement it and execute it consistently at within 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days of gestation. In that way, we are going to feed properly the animals and always following the, the nutrition recommendation. But what is the goal? The goal is at least to have 90% of females in a normal mode condition. That means that we are going to have less than 10% of thin sows and fat sows. Why? Because the fat sows, as you know, has a higher cost of production, poor milk production, more stillborn and more ledons, and the thin sows has poor milk production and more fallouts. In the other hand, we need to have a solid howling program and implement it consistently. That means that we are going to call lame sows, sows with really poor body condition, or sows with other issues. We need to identify them prior, prior winning, and we don't need to place this kind of sows in the breeding area. Also, we need to be able to identify the problematic sows, the sows that is going to compromise the far wind performance. So the first step is identify them, the second step is monitor and treat them, and always be prepared to early win this kind of sows. Also, we need to control the excessive toenail growth because it's also a welfare issue. We have two different strategies. The first one could be have a strategic calling program for that kind of reasons, and the other thing is try to trim the long two in younger females. This is the second area, health and sanitation. Remember, power washing, disinfection, and downtime are the key to reduce the pathogen load in our farming rooms. In other words, if the pathogen load is higher than the sow or piglet immunity, we are going to lose the game. Let's say that nobody will remember how fast you power wash and disinfect the room while having 15% of pre-winning mortality. This part of the job is important, and sometimes this job is done by an experienced people without the proper supervision. So here, here are the, the most basic things. Remove all organic and fecal material and use the disinfectant in the proper dose. And also spread it, covering all parts of the crate and feeders. Downtime. Downtime is playing a big role in this procedure. The downtime makes that procedure more efficient. But always we know that the downtime is a challenge. Try to get at least one night before to load the farrowing room. 
The third area is Ilipicure. Ilipicure starts when we are setting the room, when we are setting the temperature. So all feeders, drinkers, mud, heat sources, ventilation device should be checked and should be worked properly. Our recommendation is set up the room starting at 74 degrees, check and record the mat temperature, preferring to keep the creep area between 90 and 95 degrees range, because we know that if the creep area is too hot or too cold, it's going to modify the piglet behavior at the heat source and also could affect the piglet viability at birth. Our recommendation is avoid using white power on the mats. Why? Because the mat, the mat temperature will drop 8 degrees, as we can see in this graph. Therefore, the piglet will, be, will, will go off on the mat to get closer to the mom. So the probability to being crushed is higher. Illiprid care also means give piglets a good start, so we need to avoid far away ingestion. Try, I know that sometimes it's difficult, but try move the stating shells to far away at 112 days. And if a south far away ingestion, add quick, because we need to save the little first. As a general rule, minimize the use of induction, but if we are going to do that, avoid inducing before 115 days of gestation. Why? Because 70% of farrowing start at after 115 of, the, of, of gestation. And we are going to have a negative effect in peak build wave and also in colostrum antibody concentration. So less build wave and less protection. We also recommend induced problematic sows, sows with fat sows, with lame sows, but do not forget to monitor them every 15, 20 minutes. Illipicure also means avoid grumpy, jumpy sows. If the sows are nervous, they are going to crush more piglets. So we need to make sure that we have fresh water, fresh feed all the time, 24-7. Train the gills preferably, especially if we are using some automatic feeders. Set up the room at 74 degrees at far wind, and then from day three ahead, we can reduce the, the room temperature until 66, 68 degrees. And that part is important, follow up on individual feed intake. We need to be able to identify the sows or liar as soon as possible and treat them accordingly. Monitoring, why monitoring is important? To me, monitoring is not only to reduce the number of stillborn that we have in our farm, it's also to reduce the number of piglet born with hypoxia, without oxygen in the brain, and piglet with hypothermia, the chilling piglet. Remember those three things. Piglet that do not overcome the hypoxia or hypothermia quickly is going to die, period. The smaller piglets are more susceptible to hypothermia and the colostrum intake during the first two hours of life is critical for the piglet survivability. Let's talk about a little bit about drying pigs off. Drying pigs off is only one of the control strategies. Only drying pigs off is not going to fix the problem, but it's going to help us to keep the piglet warm, and it's going to help us to reduce the pregnant mortality only takes 20 seconds per pick, and my gold standard is do it with paper towels. We need to dry all piglets during the day, but also early morning we need to dry all wet piglet born overnight. Here in this graph we can see how the piglets overcome the hypothermia when, when in the group that the piglet were dried and the piglet that the piglet not, uh, not dried. This quicker. Monitoring also means that we need to manage the heat sources. So one of the things that I have, I have seen many times visiting farms is the clean the heat lamps bulb, because if not, it's not going to work efficiently, it's not going to work properly, and should be part of the room preparation. Also, we need to check the pillar behavior at the heat sources, because it's playing a big role reducing the number of piglets laid on. So, for example, in this picture, we can see that the little A and little B, we don't need any adjustment. 
But in the leader C and leader D, we can see that the heat, that the creep area is too hot. And in the leader E, we can see that the pillars are too cool. So some adjustment are required. A split cycling. What is a split cycling? Basically, is to move off the first biggest five, seven peaks born and let the smaller ones to nurse without competition. Again, it's a tool to maximize the calostrum intake, but it's only a tool, it's not a solution to, it's not the unique thing that is gonna to, to resolve the pre-winning mortality problem, and also need to be well managed. Which are the common mistakes? Not record the beginning of time of a pill cycle term, not put piglets in the heat zone, do not wash and disinfect the equipment, not marking the piglet being a split circle. Those are the common mistakes. So if we are going to split cycling some leaders, we need to do it properly. But we have to do that in all leaders. I would say no. The first thing that we have to do is check for empty bellies and check for full bellies. The general recommendation is we are going to do that on leaders with 15 or more bona life. If we have leaders with 14 or less bona life, but we don't have enough functional teeth, yes, but always check for empty bellies. The cross fostering. We need to we need to remember three things. The teeth count is extremely important and should be done properly. So in some cases, prior farrowing, and in other cases during the farrowing. And we need to know how many milking teeth, functional teeth do we have. Should be done during the first 24 hours and always after getting colostrum. So we need to check the water balloon bellies because we, are no, we don't have to move piglets with empty bellies without colostrum intake. Our recommendation is limit the cross fostering movements. What is the goal? The goal is to keep the leader integrity in at least 80% of the farrowings. That means that we are going to move piglets from leader with 15 or more bona life to leader with 11 or less bona life. Minimize the movements. The round piglet management. What is a round piglet? It's a weaker, smaller, but healthy pigs in one liter. And following the recommendation that to do less movements, less movements as possible, do not touch liter from 12 to 14 pigs born alive if we have enough functional teeth. For example, it's a room bore in, in a 14 pigs liter and the sow has 15 functional teeth, we don't have to do nothing. This is our recommendation. And remember, always check for empty or full bellies. If we need to create a room litter, always after calostrum intake, be sure that we are moving the small piglets, but with full bellies. And always the same day of birth. We need to find the best place for the room litter. Do not place the room litter close to the doors, close to the fans. The best place should be in the middle of the room. And always try to choose the best sow for this kind of litter. A good P2, P, P4 sow with suitable nipple size and good other exposure. The last area is the file behind management. The file behind management should be done every day, every day. And we need to identify the file behind piglets as soon as possible during the between day three to day seven. After day seven and sometime after day six or, or after day five, we are not gonna to have too much advantage. As a rule, consider to have one fresh sow, one new sow per 15 ferros. And again, a good sow, P2, P4, with good underline, with good other exposure. And this is the rule of thumb. Put the piglet on time on the right sow. In our farm, we can see those different situation. I choose the right sow, but I was picking up the piglet too late. The result is bad. I choose the wrong sow, but I was picking the piglet on time. The result is bad. So 
the right side of picking up the period on time is the way to have more chances to have better results. So take it away. So remember that we were talking about four different areas. The first one is the right sow. Try to work with sows that is going to have a good, a good performance in farrowing. So well-managed sows tend to have less pig deaths per farrowing. The second area is health and sanitation. It's extremely important to control that part of the, of the uh, process to reduce the progenic mortality. The room setup is part of the early pig care. We need to provide <coughs> the right temperature and comfort zone for the sow and also for the piglet. And the last one is try to minimize the number of piglets died by laydowns or rounds, implementing a solid early pig care management, rug litter management, and fall behind management. Be consistent. That kind of thing should be implemented every day. And remember that our recommendation is try to maintain the leader integrity in at least 80% of the farmings. <laughs>